bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. John is preaching about judgment, about repentance, the winnowing fork and the fires of hell. I like to imagine that Jesus and John might have met as children, perhaps when their families got together to celebrate the festival, Purim or Passover. Their mothers might reminisce. Remember when we met when we were both pregnant and how anxious you were, Mary? Elizabeth reassured her. But the first encounter that we are actually told of between Jesus and John takes place by the River Jordan, where John is preaching and baptized, and Jesus comes and says, Baptize me. And John protests, No, this should be the other way around. John knows that Jesus is the greater of the cousins. He knows and accepts that Jesus is the one for whom he is but a messenger. And then Jesus' identity is confirmed in the baptism by that inbreaking of God's voice. This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. And so Jesus and John embrace and go their separate ways, both preaching the good news of the kingdom in their own ways. <clears throat> Jesus does far more than preach. He heals people. He cures them from disease. Jesus preaches to the crowds, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He tells people to let their light shine, to turn the other cheek, to pray to their Father in heaven, who promises to hear their prayers. The following crowds grow in number and we are told when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them. The gospel that Jesus preaches is not all sweetness and life. There will be divisions within families, he says, and persecution and betrayal. But again and again, Jesus returns to his key message of the kingdom of a loving father, his message of grace and love and compassion, faith and wholeness and healing. The next encounter we hear of between Jesus and John doesn't actually take place in person. It's between messengers. John has been imprisoned. We only find out later that this is because of Herod and his wife. And John hears what Jesus is doing. He sends a message. Are you the one who is to come? Or are we to wait for another? Are you the one? Are you the one? John is starting to doubt. Starting to doubt himself and to doubt Jesus. Are you the one? The question is both challenging and poignant. Look behind the question. Jesus, have I got this all wrong? I believe that you were the Messiah, the one who is coming to restore the kingdom of David, the Savior to come in power. Jesus, was I wrong? What kind of power do either of us have right now? And Jesus, tell me, if I am wrong about you, what am I? Who am I? Jesus is replying, don't tell John. Tell John what you see and hear. And John, in his prison cell, must have left with joy. Yes, this is the Messiah. Because John knew his scripture. He knew that text from Isaiah, the same one that we heard earlier. The blind shall receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. The people of Israel expected a Messiah, a Savior who would come in power, a king, kingly figure who would lead their people in power. But in the prophets there are also hints of a different type of Savior, of other expectations of the coming of the day when the meek shall obtain joy in the Lord, and the neediest shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. Another passage from Isaiah. And it might seem obvious to Christians who know that later Jesus rides into donkey, into Jerusalem on a donkey, that he is not the kind of Messiah that John and others expected. He was not the one who was going to grab an earthly throne, an earthly power. He was a different kind of Messiah, and John and others had to adjust their expectations. So it seems John got his emphasis on the wrong syllable because Jesus is a king, but not one who is seeking power, but whose way of being is walking alongside people, of seeing the needs of those around him, of loving the people he met. His gospel is of healing, service to others, forgiveness 
and above all else, love. Christmas is coming. Some of you might have a tree up. Some of you may have written or received Christmas cards. May have started your shopping. Some of you may even have had a holiday meal with turkey. In the midst of all we have to do, in church and at home, I wonder, have we got it right? Have we remembered the good news? In the hubbub of popular seasonal music, have we heard the message? If I could really sing a great song, do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? But I can't sing, so we won't do that. Do we, like John, need to pause and take a moment and to think about who is Jesus? Who is it that we celebrate? Jesus, are you the one? Advent gives us the time and hopefully some space for our questions. And our challenge is to make the time, take the space to think about Jesus, to reflect on the one who is to come. Now is the time to prepare to celebrate the one whose word causes the deaf to hear, the blind to see, and the lame to leap, who challenges our expectations. John died in prison, a story for another day, but how his heart was still filled with joy when messengers arrived and told him the good news, this is the Christ, the long-expected Messiah. Thanks be to God. So now we have the third part of the sermon, and this is the theological part. Theology literally means theos, God, and logos, word, talking about God. So, I said earlier that in order to set some tangible goals for the next five years, we'd like your help as we too seek to witness to the kingdom and to the ministry of Christ. So, on your little few sheets, there's a sheet of paper or inside your few sheets. And you'll see those six priority areas are listed. So what we need you to tell us is from the what concrete thing do you think St. John should do? We need you to be specific, not just say, be friendly. In what way might you do that, be friendly? And number two, are you the one? Please tell us what you might be willing or able to do in the future to help us achieve these priority areas. And the reason that this is the theological part of the sermon is because at St. John's, we are hoping that each of us will do all we can for God's work, for spreading the word of God. And I mean word as in Jesus' word and word as in gospel. So, I can't all think about everything, so I'm going to divide you into groups. Yay, everybody loves talking in church. I'm not. I'm going to do it anyway. So, why? I'd like you to think about building up the community here at St. John's. Hold that thought. You're number one. Right?
And so now, um, any of you who uh, worked anywhere in school, you might know the little phrase buzz groups. So I want you to buzz with one or two people sitting near you. So a little buzz for two or three minutes to share what you've been thinking about that particular area of priority I asked you to think about. Time is now. Did you talk to the others about what you were thinking about? Learning about Jesus. What's that? Yeah, what about doing Jesus? That what? For who?
Amen.